Hello world, that's my thing, that's my introduction. And of course, from this portion, we have some beautiful guests in the house in the building with us today. You know, they could have been anywhere in the world, but they're right here with me, because like I always say, I will harass that ass. That's just facts, that's just facts at the end of the day. I got each of y'all's numbers. I was text y'all all night, all day, make you feel guilty for not joining me. But I appreciate at the end of the day for always coming in and hitting these topics, because these are things that need to be discussed, especially for our community. Educate those that don't know and are not unaware and just better ways to have a healthy relationship. The transparency that we give these people help these people. And it's been a beautiful thing. So I really do appreciate you guys because you do take time out of your day just to join me. And I wouldn't say goof off, but educate and a little bit of goofing off. That's facts, though. But with all that said, um, we are at the V table. You know, I've been rocking with that, Shanice, ever since you, you corrected me. Flip this whole round, round, round table I wanted it to be. No, but <laughs> no, but I thank you. I thank you. Dead as I do. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the V table. We are at the V table, and our special panel guest that we got today. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hey everyone, my name is Shanice Shani V with two eyes dot com for the website and the purest form of beauty is love. Hey everybody, my name is Shay. I'm a sex educator. I'm excited to be here tonight. You guys can find me on Instagram at Shay as well. I'm King, father, son, husband, black man. I'm just here. Drop it, AKA, 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 no, <laughs> black cowboy out there in the streets. Like, no, I'm just playing. Whoa, say. don't call me no black cowboy. Yeah, Ooh. see, you know, I'm in Texas, fill away now. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Wes up here. Oh yeah, I'm, I feel you, see. I my apologies, my people. Got out there rocket launches and shit, Chicago and Detroit, all that. Now nah, I'm putting. Nah. Uh, and last but not least, that we got in the building, and I'm putting her in a position where she's putting on the seat belt for safety. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey everybody. Um, I'm Gibby. I don't do anything special like all the other people. I'm just poly as fuck. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Everybody Loves Gibby. <laughs> Facts. And don't let her play. She is an event planner, a poly organizer in San Antonio. Oh, I don't want to want to say your place of, of residence. But um, yeah, she she does she does host events, you know, um, in her local area. So she is someone to tap in with because I'm gonna tap in with her to make sure we can orchestrate something in her local area soon. But with all that said, right, I wanted to bring you guys on to hit that hit a discussion, a topic. I'm not experienced in it, so I had to bring people that you know are new to it, have experienced it, might question it, is doing it. You know, um, I want to talk about long distance relationships. This is something that actually became big that I was researching, especially with COVID. Because with COVID and being uh, quarantined in our own household, we couldn't even communicate with our spouse or, I don't want to say spouses, because I hope you're talking to your spouse in the fucking house. <laughs> some people, some I don't like her. <laughs> some people didn't. Go over there. <laughs> nah, uh, not with your spouses, but, you know, just people you were in a relationship with, give or take, right? In the same city, but you had to treat it as if you were out of town. So, uh, you know, a lot of people started looking at the option of, shit, I'm talking to you like this all. So, why not just Zoom or, and they got creative with it. It became something pretty, you know, people started popping with this. Especially with social media. I didn't get the opportunity to take advantage of that. But um, <laughs> give or take, right? Have you guys experienced it? What has been y'all's experience? I'll bring it beyond in a minute. Um, how, what have been y'all's experiences with it? Are you new to it? You know, is this something that you guys would probably try, won't try? What are your ideas of this whole long distance relationship ways, I guess you would say? I don't know. I don't know who wants to go first. I'm somewhat new to it, man. I haven't um, done much long distance relationship shit, man. Like dated somebody for a couple of months who lived in another city, another state, but she spent a lot of time up here kicking it with us. So I didn't really get to experience her being away for too much. So I'm, I'm waiting to experience some of that. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna, I have a question, but I um I don't know if someone else wants to kind of share their experience with it with a long distance. Yeah, I'll share mine. Um, I have experience in long distance relationships. I did it for two years, and we were like opposites. Like he was way on the east coast, I was way on the west coast. But um, I definitely think they can work with two people who are committed to making it work. Um, but 
some like you know king said making sure that you guys are putting in the effort to see one another um it might not work for everybody where you can see each other as often as you'd like but i think that if two people are committed you can definitely make it work okay and give you i know you're in one is this kind of the stuff you do um definitely so considering that all of my relationships are long distance um i've definitely learned that putting in the time to be uh very what's the word um intentional Mm -hmm. on communicating and the time plan together is very important and relationships are extremely long distance uh one of us in South Korea we are very oh. intentional on those sides yo okay first of all I need you to connect the wi-fi because you're breaking up uh, yes. Part out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got mad questions for the Korean shit though. I got mad co- connect to your Wi Fi because I got mad questions for the Korean shit though. Because that I, that has to be bonkers. It, I, 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 my Wi Fi. Let me disconnect from my wife. I am connected, but that's probably the problem. So to get back to the Korea, the Korea a relationship in Korea. How often do you guys actually see each other? Um, so actually we have not met in person. <laughs> oh shit. Um, I have met his wife in person and our daughters have hung out with each other, but him and I have not met in person yet. That's cool. That is that is dope. So I'm gonna ask all you guys, um, do you feel when it's a long distance relationship and you can't have um you know because usually when we're hitting dates or something like that we have some some people have expectations for the night but you really have to meet a person on a different level with just dealing with strictly communication we have to communicate with each other this is gonna put us in a whole different um place to where we have to connect mentally now you know we're you know it's different I can't touch you I can't I can't hold you I can't do nothing nothing physical just you know we could zoom or we could chat. Do you feel that creates a greater bar when you're when you're um doing the long distance relationships because you only have that alternative of actually communicating or being around each other? I believe so. Um, and I think it's because you take away the physical aspect of it. And I think a lot of people do get caught up in a physical relationship and they don't they don't really know whether they like somebody or not. So it's like, I slept with you, but do I even like you? You know, I've, I've met plenty of people who say they've been in relationships where they kind of just stuck with the person because it was comfortable because they were always around them. It was more of a physical thing, but they don't even like this person. Like they literally hop out of the bed like sex is great, but I really don't like this chick. And so I think that taking away that physical aspect of it does force you to communicate more and, and really connect on a more personal level, I'm mentally, spiritually, emotionally. I would say my relationships were really strong when they were long distance for those reasons. Yeah, that's that. that. Yeah, I would think so, because, you know, with uh, not being there in person, you got to be on the phone all the time or the Zoom. You got to find something to talk about. You definitely not sitting on the phone with nobody for 30 minutes to an hour, not saying nothing. Stay breathing. Got to keep the conversation flowing. Yeah. Stay breathing. Stay breathing. So what's the creative ways that you actually, because obviously, like, especially Gibby, like you dating some going how would dating basically dating the creativity <laughs> has to be there like like mentally has to be there. like yo have your cards ready take out these cards because i got these cards on this end like you, you know <laughs> how, how do you do that like how does dating you know because obviously talk we could talk or whatever but you know i know a lot of people were getting creative doing dates through zoom what are some of the things that you experience or any of you guys experience how were y'all doing the dating process only interacting through zoom or through call so one of the things that we do often um is netflix watch parties because oh, sure. um, mm-hmm. you can you can sync up and literally watch the same movie at the same time um and since you guys are connected it's real time together um we also like because of the time difference so he's 15 hours ahead of me um so like he'll 
it'll be his morning time when it's my night time. So we'll do like breakfast for dinner for me because it's his breakfast time and we have breakfast together. Mm -hmm. But you definitely have to get very creative. Yo, that was that was amazing. That is dope. Did you any of you guys do um anything that kind of could be informative for others that are trying long distance relationship? I never, like I said, I never did it. You know what I mean? I wouldn't. I didn't even know about the Netflix thing. Like, I, right. I, that is yeah. like, so. Like, what are some yeah. key points within like when we're still trying to connect? I mean, we could talk all we want to, but what are different other ideas or things that you guys experienced that you were like, yeah, it was kind of cool to be on this level to race home, come in, hit the hit the laptop, hit whatever. And connect with this individual I was dating on this type of way, like this type of game, whatever, or we had this kind of routine. Um, I think a couple of things you can do to be creative, like in my situation, we both like to read books. So we would read, we would talk about it. Um, if you were a little more spicy uh, and we want to talk about the more intimate side of the relationship, because obviously you guys are far apart. Uh, sex toys have evolved like no other so you can actually give you can gift your partner a sex toy and you can control it from where you are you can control it from your phone you know they do you can do bluetooth now so I think that it just depends on where y'all are in your relationship if it's early on and y'all still you know planning the cute little dates doing little things here and there if y'all are in a stage of getting to know each other there's a ton of card games uh, Alex, you have a card game. Uh, people are more than welcome to, you know, kind of try that out, get to know each other a little bit more, maybe ask questions that y'all didn't think of. And now you're like, damn, we was really having that conversation last night. Like he really asked me about that. And then y'all kind of come back to it because now y'all are on a deeper level. So I think those are things you can do. And if you're anything like me and you like to dance, um, you could also put on shows for your partner so you can let them watch you. So that's a, or partners, you can watch you. So Note, noting that. No, no. Re- yeah. recording, <laughs> recording little videos and and sending it for him to wake up to or for me to wake up to and my during my morning time it's, it's a cute thing <laughs> that is that that's dope Shanice you have a Shanice have you experienced a long distance relationship not since I mean I thought of some shit so I've never really experience a long distance relationship other than from when I was younger I always did the long distance because I didn't like being like close up but that was before I was having sex and now it's like unless I'm gonna they'll know openly that like I am gonna still be having sex with somebody else then cool we can do a long distance relationship but like no you couldn't do it you could <laughs> how is that right how long is that like it's, how long is it, how long would i have to do a long distance relationship if it's six months maybe but like what if the that. six months it's like yo that's it it's gonna carry you for the other six until i see you again people do it for <laughs> what? years i mean man. shit warrior man dingo he could <laughs> <laughs> nah so is that it? how do y'all how do you handle that okay now nah, now nah, i love what shay said about the bluetooth toys because that's what i was gonna get to too yeah you should have told him that i, I want to talk about, oh <laughs> yo saying you said i've been knowing about that joint with the bluetooth especially keeping it spicy but um what you call it I, I wanted to get to that when we spoke about the intimacy like different ways of how the intimacy is is there when you're dealing with a long distance relationship but what shanice uh just stated like how did how it how does that go, uh, David? I don't know if you want to kind of tap into, it, especially from a man's perspective of, like, if you I don't know how to say this perfectly, you know, if I want to have sex, you know, at that moment, then and there, like, you want to get off those urges, those urges. We ain't <laughs> never done the masturbation over the Zoom, mm. over the Facetime. You gotta. I'm new to all this thing. That's something I, you gotta I try. Be the most man. innocent one in this goddamn chat right now. <laughs> <laughs> You said in cum videos and shit. <laughs> FaceTimer, man. You're not at the crib. FaceTimer and, and uh, get it popping that way. Five it, games it, to okay. play. I, I, I get the creativity behind that because that's also still with like the sex toys or, you know, calling you up, pulling out the play with the Bluetooth. I want to know when you have the that urge for a physical touch, their physical touch. Their their touch, like how do you deal and process that, knowing you can't have that at that moment? Well, they have a bracelet that if you touch it, the other person like can feel it. You can do that. I guess that's the closest you can get a touching from far away. 
Damn, that's kind of dope. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, you might need to drop yeah, that, that information is. if you if you know yeah. that it's information. Like, you kind of think about them, you touch it, and they and they know. So it's like it's. Yeah. I mean, there are. I'm not saying that a long distance relationship cannot work, especially when your brain can be amazing when you make it work. Right. You can make it work on every single level, especially when you when you connect with that person on a level that you never connected to before or you want to pursue, you're going to make the shit work. So there's multiple things, products out there for it to work. So it's just about getting creative and knowing about the different products so you can be equipped with it. D- we, uh, and having the finances to get it. <laughs> Oh, facts. I really want to know that information on that on that thing that you could touch. I'll look it up right now. That would be dope just to actually kind of put that out there. But back right. to, um, to, I guess, the physical test, though, like, if, is that something you actually deal with? Like, um, <clears throat> the reason I asked that, right, is because um, I used to do a lot of interviews with um, poly families. And then some families, they did not stay together. She, uh, one, one partner shared another partner, and she would stay at another house with her, with her core partner. And she had said, you know, even though they lived in the same city, she was like, yeah, at times, I wanted her to stay with me. I would miss her. I felt like I had a long day at work. I wanted her touch. I wanted, you know, <clears throat> so it was hard to go to sleep knowing I can't get that, but knowing I love her so much, I yearn for her, but I couldn't have this. So now we're talking long distance. How are those like, especially with um, the man in um, Korea? Like, it, it ain't like he could even catch a flight and he'd be there like in four hours. You're talking about how do you deal with those things? Or is that just an understanding you have within self until it's time to actually connect in person? So I guess a benefit for me is physical touch is pretty low on my list of love languages. Um, so I, I can do well without it. Um, but also, I really can't miss something that I've never had. Thanks. So mm-hmm. like we haven't had that experience with each other yet. Um, I still just get excited every single time he mm-hmm. answers his video chat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love that. With his wife? Huh? Are you intimate with his wife or are you guys just friends? No, we're just friends. Oh, nice. Yo, and for everybody needs to know, because um, I do want to drop that, it's uh bond touch i think that's kind of dope you know what i mean it's edit, just edit it's that just... out man because they ain't paying you no money for advertising fucking right yo you just wow. put me on a game i'm gonna bleep it and i'm gonna be like until y'all start paying they didn't pay mayweather <laughs> they didn't pay. get them off the table get them off the table you're <laughs> fat thank you my brother but no i think a, a, a device like that still is very dope you know on so many different levels um i'm a father i'm a father that has a son that's getting deployed yeah. a daughter that's not in the same state I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm very. I'm. I, I, yo, I will send that to my kids in a heartbeat. Yo, your dad. Your daddy thinking about. You. I didn't think about that. I, that's how I am. Yo, I bought my kids matching rings with me because I wanted to know. Well, yo, whenever you think about me, touch the ring. The ring don't warm up, but shit, the ring, the ring, right? I got. I got. <laughs> so I got too many I'm kids for them bracelets, man. Yeah, you <laughs> you all of my arms. Yo, yeah, you like. I'm straight. <laughs> yeah, fucking right. Your daddy holding you, goddammit. <laughs> no, but I think stuff like that, the creativity behind it is kind of dope. You know what I mean? I, I love what you said, Gibby. And I think that's has to be, that's an important part too. You can't, I, I, I wouldn't say you can't have one of your love languages be physical touch. But if it is, and that's one of your main ones, I think it could cause, but this is an assumption. I mean, it could cause some type of an issue. But like Shanice said, if we have an understanding that somebody pulling up, I mean... I can speak I to that one because uh, physical touch is my number one. So for me, it just, it intensifies for when we finally, you know, get a chance to meet up because I've been, I've been needing, I've been longing for that. So when I finally get it, man, it's through the roof. Yo, I love that. Back mm-hmm. Though. Mm-hmm. I absolutely agree um, with, for someone who's, first love language is physical touch it can be difficult my husband's first language is physical touch um and that's kind of how we got to where we are now because me being gone for six months seven months two years uh he was struggling and I couldn't even be mad at him what'd you do (laughs) Um, we all rolled like Sorry, go ahead. It's your business. It's my bad. No. No, she's in the military. She's in the military. Oh, she, okay. 
Not a case. <laughs> Motherfucker was tripping. Nah. <laughs> nah, but she in the military. So someone like that, I, I, yo, I think stuff like that, especially, I mean, you kind of conform to that situation. You're always traveling. You know, yes. you're always one side. It's, 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 at a, it's at any moment, you know. Uh, so you have to be kind of finding clever ways to stay connected to your spouses at home, too, as well. That is dope. I did not even think about that. But with that being said, intimacy. Intimacy is such an important thing within any type of relationship. You know what I mean? Well, within your relationship that you have engaged romantically with anybody. But so how are clever ways to, to it's keep... It's also with others, with other relationships. It's, I mean, I feel like... If because I hate to have... say spouses, because when I say spouses, people instantly think husband and wife, and it could be like girlfriend, boy. So I, every really, I don't know. Some people be like... But what about woman. friendships? Like regular friendships. Why is there not intimacy within friendships? Like, Ooh. especially between females, there's intimacy is just connecting on a deeper level. Right. And you definitely do that with friends. Yeah, you do. Sexually. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I want you to dive into on that. Kind of like, well, now, you know, well, that, well, yeah, now go ahead and dive into all the levels of intimacy. And then we're going to talk about how you can actually really do them, how they're conducted on them. Um, or how you created ways you actually do a long, long distance. I've never been in a long distance relationship. So I'm coming from a fucking <laughs> blind spot. Like, I'm like, what do I got? Like, how do you do this shit? But kind of break it down to everybody, Shanice. If you will, if nope, you that's Chase. That, that's going to be Shanice. <laughs> my lovely uh, lady. We, we my beautiful, my beautiful woman to the left of me over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go ahead and drop those <laughs> levels. <laughs> Yeah. So, so I think that when you think about intimacy, I think you have to think about your love language, right? Because you can create different ways of creating intimacy with your partner. So for example, if, you know, it's words of affirmations, you know, making sure that when you're having conversations with your partner, you know, you tell them the things that you like about them, because that's going to make them feel good. Um, Making sure you remember important things that makes someone feel special. I think that if they're gifted, again love and intimacy is is very much connected um so if this person's love language is like gift giving you know giving them something that's a gift but something really really special okay get it right like send me the gifts look Look, i got gifts to send look and i've been sending them up in a real gift giving mood but remembering to do those kind of things for your partner and i think that it can get difficult but i think that what makes it even more special is that when you guys are apart and your partner remembers those things because you guys have had so much conversation that that's already really intimate you guys are already sharing things with each other that you guys don't share with anybody else and sometimes i think we might overcomplicate the idea of intimacy it's really not i mean it's a very deep thing but we overcomplicate it something as little as me sharing something really personal about myself with someone and, and I feel safe enough to do that, that's an intimate act. That's an intimate moment, but it looks different for everybody. So I wouldn't say there's a one size fits all on how to make intimacy work. I think you have to pay attention to your partner, know what they like, know what makes them feel special and work with it from there. Yo, I, love that. I love that she has an intimacy course coming out soon about mm-hmm. movement. So it just works <laughs> all out that she's talking about intimacy. <laughs> yes, I mean, so I'm excited. I'm, that one is going to be... It's going to be something that I'm hoping people really enjoy to participate in, especially my ladies. Like, I'm look, when you want to communicate intimacy to your partner, there are beautiful ways to do it. Both touch why, and non Why especially the ladies? The fellas want to join. Gift. We want to <laughs> learn about intimacy, too. We want to be worry. better at it. I got a course coming out about that one. So, my friend's been complaining. <laughs> and it is for both. It is for both parties. But I think that for women, whether it's giving or receiving intimacy, we do sometimes have like those blockages with expressing it to our partners, which is why, you know, a part of the reason why we do have that pleasure gap is because women are so afraid to express themselves. So what I'm hoping to do in the intimacy course is to get people to come together, both men and women, and learn how to not only communicate, but give actual exercises that women can do to both give intimacy and receive intimacy without fear. So look, I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to let you be the judge and critique. If that's all you wanted, all you had to do is say that. <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is, as a man, I, I only know what I know. And so we need to be taught. And those that are willing to learn need to be, need to have that space. So And men are nervous too to share. So it's, it works for everybody. When I Thanks. when I send it to you though, please make sure um, you know. Let me know how you like it. Like, let me know. Let me know you. if it gives you all the feels. Okay. I got you. Yo, definitely. But with that too. So, um, what are clever ways in your long distance relationships? I know Shanice. If, you know, you you ain't. Would you do it? Would you do it? 
first and foremost. But you do so, a relationship. With me, with, okay, so intimacy, I love talking about intimacy because of the fact that I'm intimate with a lot of people. And for some people, they might feel like, how can, it's not fair. Because I'm speaking to multiple, like how she, I, she said that I'm sharing this with you that I don't share with nobody else. But right. for me, it's how I look at it is I'm me and I and I should, should be able to choose who I share myself with and who I don't share myself with because I'm in control of me. And if my if I'm able to connect with my friends on a deeper level by sharing myself and they're able to connect with me on a deeper level by sharing themselves, that is amazing. So now and so if I'm into my friends like that, it doesn't really change a long distance relationship being intimate I'm not fucking like I'm just a friend <laughs> so that's why it's hard for me for a long distance and that like if no I don't know how do you guys do it though Gibby I'm gonna go with you how are how, how ways you guys keep the intimacy there with you and your um so I think intimacy and relationships looks different depending on that particular relationship. Um, so I've, I've talked about my relationship with my boyfriend in Korea, but I also have a long distance girlfriend um, that lives in Philly and our intimacy is totally different than that of me and my boyfriends. Like me and him at this point, we're just kind of like, in that best friend space um but me and her it's it's way different like even from a, literally across the country like the sexual tension is there and it's always there um so naturally we just kind of explore it we talk about it um we send pictures we just normal things um but then also looking at that intimacy that we share on a deeper level um thinking about how we got to this point in our relationship even though we're long distance um and we haven't seen each other in almost a year so you just you get creative based off of your relationship and what it is that your relationship calls for i like that I really like that. Mm-hmm. That's dope. That's amazing. I didn't even know about I, I think that's probably when you was breaking up because I didn't hear about the girlfriend in Philly. Got the bomb <laughs> on me. I'm like, damn, yeah, yeah, I want to be you when I grow up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that's that's dope. I, you know, um, I think it's amazing because the different approach you have to take for this type of relationship, and especially for the floor. You know, sometimes <laughs> living with the same person, we're not that creative. And, and I'm kind of, either. <laughs> Yeah, like, relationship dries out exactly exactly there's certain things i'll do to make sure i keep certain things there you know what i mean but it's just you're kind of put in a position it's, it's kind of when we find ourselves in a position we have to try to put in our best efforts and until we're there sometimes comfortability i always tell people being comfortable is your number one enemy you get too comfortable with any situation you're gonna fuck it up you're, it's, you're gonna lose it it just is what it except is except for being it's comfortable there. with yourself even still if you get too comfortable with yourself then you get you hit that plateau so you still got to keep pushing mm, forward I, like that. I agree with that i like that came with alley you thank you no. yep, right. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely yo so i want to get to, to the to the sex play right i, I don't know what, i don't want to call it that because some people do are like g-rated in it that watch my show that are fan based and like yo, i don't really but this is the way we got to connect too. You know what I mean? I know we said about the masturbating videos, sending videos, the Bluetooth things. These ideas right here, how long does it last and does it bring the excitement? Kind of like the anticipation. I don't know, like locally playing, um, fuck, I, mind you, I, I'm a little off today, so I, I can't really process. Um, what's it called? Um, locally, when you live with somebody, you're, you're doing the anticipation. You're hitting each other up. You know what I mean? Building up. When I pull up, being at that action. So are these things that kind of help build when you get that first physical interaction, they pull enough the excitement, you know, especially because you have um, the Bluetooth toy. Do you have that, Shay, on your side? Yeah. 
Um, I do not have it. I don't sell sex toys, but I do have a connection that does, and she is absolutely amazing. So if anybody wants to know, y'all can definitely hit me in my DMs. Um, but I do think that there is a buildup for people, right? Because distance make, makes the heart grow fonder. That's what they say. Um, and there's some truth in that, right? Like you're not seeing the same person every day. Like you're excited to see them because that distance has you like, man, I haven't seen this person in so long, or this is going to be the first meetup. But what I think is also a benefit is the fact that because you guys have been talking for so long, you probably know so much about each other. That's going to make that experience a little bit easier. You guys have done one thing that a lot of people struggle with, which is master communication, right? So now, now you can communicate with somebody. So when y'all do get to the bedroom, it's like, you know, nah, babe, remember that thing that I showed you? Like, you know, remember how I put it a little to the left? Or, you know, if you if you like to get real visual and excuse me, you know, uh, trigger warning for anybody that doesn't like rated R, but, um, you know, if you put the camera real up close and personal, you know, you could really show your partner what you like and where you like it and how you like it. So when they get up close and personal, they're like, oh, I remember she did that thing that one time. Let me try that. You know, and she's comfortable enough to tell you like, yeah, I like it like that. I like it right there. And I think that comfort, you know, is there because you guys have talked for so long. And you can probably have more intimacy out like long distance. And because like, if you think about it, especially during COVID, a lot of relationships did end because intimacy in, in that space was not there. But yeah, if you're already long distance, you're already creating that intimacy. So you really didn't lose anything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thanks. Yo, and what's crazy, I love that you stated that because um, I'm going to use us, like all of us, especially us in the panel. Um, I don't, I never met y'all physically. I never met y'all in person, but I could hit you guys up. I could hit anybody up, you know what I mean? And be like, you can get, well, give me, I met you in person, guys. <laughs> but I could, uh, yeah, I have that comfortability. I feel like I know you, you know what I mean? Um, Especially like when the Ruffs and Day Squad came for the first time. I swear to God, we, like we hit the restaurant and it was just instant, like we had just kicked it last week. I'm like, yo, you remember that over there and how we did it? So I could just, I can't even, like, I could fan how it would be, you know, on an intimate level. Like, we just connect. Like, yo, it's just going to take off. I really love that you broke that shit down because, yeah, I stand they with ain't you. invite me. You ain't invite me nowhere. <laughs> oh, man. They said you, you, they said the shit you did at Party the Loser. <laughs> yo, <laughs> hey, yo, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> I'm going to this part out. <laughs> Now no, <laughs> but see, uh, what I love about everything so far, I haven't been really hearing nothing negative about long distance relationships. And I stand on what Shay said, because I could personally say from my experiences of getting to know people over the phone, communicating with them and things that we have a like, you know, I mean, there's certain things that I'll connect with somebody and be like, man, this, yeah, I like you for this reason. I, this, this is cool. It brings more and it, it makes the relationship be me, be more meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to meet you in person. So I could just let alone imagine what it would be in a romantic setting, like, you know, being vulnerable in that type of area and, you know, expressing and having that communication fluent because we can't do that shit in person. Most people can't. But what are the negatives? Like, what are the things that we have to take away and some people that aren't expected? I don't want to hype up something and, and not tell the people the bad, too. But what the are some negative. of the... There's only one negative. There's only one negative. Like, you can't fuck when you want to fuck. That's the only negative. In no, my that's not the only negative. No, it's not. <laughs> look, like, that's my negative. Janine, look, dead ass. She needs to get ass. She, she says, she said, look, if I want it and you can't pull up, I don't want it. We, we can't do it. Fuck that. Keep that shit. <laughs> no, I would say some of the negatives would be some people have trust issues, man, and you can't hmm. see your partner on a regular basis. You can't interact with them physically on a regular basis man you don't you you can't trust them or some people feel like they can't trust them because they're not there like I don't know what you're doing all day or from day to day I only know when we on the phone so what are you doing with the rest of your time and to and that I would definitely say when you trust yourself you will trust the next person more because if I, I and you don't get fucked over when you do it that way at the end of the day. You will. But one person's not going to fuck you over. And you just got to trust me. I trust that if you're not doing fucked up shit, the other person's not going to do fucked up shit. That's right. Well, I mean, that's that is kind of challenging, though. You don't know. You can trust you yourself and, and keep your morale high. I mean, your, your morals can be set there, but you don't know somebody. Like, you know what they do. And if you can't trust, and put it there. I mean, that could eat you. That that could eat you. And always, I mean, you have you have insecure people 
next to you. You know what I mean? Shit. Going to the store makes a motherfucker goddamn. How many motherfuckers hollers at you at the store? Me? I did. I holler at her. Matter of fact, I put five in the tank too, goddammit. Nah, just... Wait. <laughs> she was out there just showing five? ass, you know? <laughs> just five in the tank. I don't have a lot of money, sir. I don't have. You get a gallon from me. You get a gallon. Prices are crazy these days. <laughs> No, but I love what David said. That is, I, I would expect that to be a challenge because let alone you live in the same city than, with me, there are people that have those insecurities and, and want that control and want to know everything you did. And if it doesn't make sense, they instantly go off. Now, if you're out of town, if you're not answering, if you didn't, you didn't meet me at the meetup time and you didn't, I don't even know how those conversations would go. That probably broke his laptop. I, I don't want to put a gender on it. Anybody can get mad, right? But I broke their land, time, smashed their house and shit. I'm I playing. love the correction. I'm going to edit this part out. I'm going to edit that part out. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> so I wanted, I kind of wanted to say too, so aside from, you know, having those trust issues, I think that for everything good that we can say is amplified in a long distance relationship, all of the mm-hmm. negatives will be uh, amplified as well. So like insecurities, trust issues, jealousy would be a big thing. Um, and I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking, I was like, you know, I know I have all these great things to say about long distance relationships, but there are also downsides to it. So I think that if a person isn't secure in who they are and if they are not secure in the type of relationships that they can form and the, the kind of healthy attachments they can they can form, it's okay for you to not want to be in a long distance relationship. Like I, I just do not, believe that everybody is built for them I, I really like them I like my space mm-hmm. I like you know kind of having that you know distance from someone but some people really need someone there all the time they need that closeness and like David was saying you know if if physical touch is your love language then it might not even just be about the sex it might be the fact that you want to hug your partner every morning you know you want to kiss them you want to touch them and so I don't think that it's for everyone because the challenges are definitely amplified thanks Facts, and I, I love how you said the um jealousy portion because um yeah people people with that jealousy it's already hard to actually contain and actually not act out on act on it you know process that and I could just let alone of what it will be if I can't see you watch you know what's going on because you do have your life in a whole other state or the whole other city that probably eats individuals you know um I don't know if anybody else wants to add to the negative. Like so, I, I ain't gonna call it negativity. I I, I, I I rather call it challenges. Challenges. The challenges that you're gonna be yeah. that you're gonna have to go through because negative to call it negative, it puts a damper on shit. Everything yeah, negative, is you know what I mean? But the challenges. It's challenging. It's, yeah, it's the challenging. challenges. I would say one of my biggest challenges, um, and it's the reason why my last long distance relationship mm-hmm. came, um was because of expectation management. Um, so mm-hmm. as people, as individuals, we all have, have those things that we would like for our other partners to do or understand, um, about us, especially when you've been in a relationship for, for a certain period of time, you're like, oh, you should know these things already. Um, one of my big things is I can't see my partners, so I need to talk to them every single day. Um, because I don't, I don't have that ability to just reach out and touch them. Um, but that is an expectation of mine that not all of my partners can meet. Um, and early on, it would piss me off. Like we would have whole entire arguments about why is it so difficult for you to just pick up the phone and FaceTime me for five minutes. That's all I ask. But I had to realize that managing my own expectations, um, it's my job. It's not their job. That's fair. I feel like healed people, like people who are healed, they can do long distance relationships. That's really what I'm hearing. Like heal, if you heal yourself, you can do it. And you can check out my tantric healing class course on shantyb.com, align your chakras, get into you because be the best you you can be at the end of the day. I will say yeah. you absolutely have to be able to love yourself to be mm-hmm. in a long distance relationship. Because if you can't love being alone, it makes being a long distance relationship very difficult. Um, 
so like Gibby says, she said expectations. I think people really need to, whether you are in a monogamous, a poly, a long distance, an in-person relationship, that the expectation part, like you have to really have like realistic expectations of what your partners can and can't do and what you can and can't do. And you really have to be upfront about that because going into a long distance relationship is hard enough as it is. You have to be honest and you have to know what you want. Like, is this something that we're going to be doing for six months a year? Is this something that we can do indefinitely? Like, what does that look like for us? And then paying attention to those intentions. Like, is this person being intentional? I think it's easier to appreciate a partner when they're long distance because you see what works they really put in and it's easier to know if somebody's not really into it because they can't just be here physically and be present but be mentally checked out that doesn't work in long distance you have to really be there for someone because you're not there in person so I love that she brought up uh expectations facts facts because I always tell people you can't put expectations you also have to look at if it's a desire it's your desire and then once you convert it to an expectation that's only going to make you mad because they didn't meet that you put it, you present it as a desire. It's a desire. I wish you can. You know, I want this. They could try to take it. They could try to do it. They could whatever, but it's not going to really make you mad or cause, you know, a situation out of that because it was just a request instead of, I need you to do it. It's going to happen. I put that there on you. Some people can't meet it for this sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, I let alone a long distance. Unfortunately. I, I'm new to this. I keep trying to tell you, I'm new to this. I'm new to this. But I, I do love all the information you guys were kind of doing, especially coming from a poly perspective, you know, um, with it, with multiple relationships. You know, and I know you had two out of town. That give you threw me for a whirlwind on that one. That, that, that oh, is three. Great. Correct yourself. He said, you know, yeah, I'm old, she, damn it. Got I got a squid. Got a I thought you was throwing gang signs. I didn't know you. <laughs> okay, well, then four. Four. There's three four. long distance. I really want to be you when I grow up. Um, <laughs> four. Oh, my my poly been good to me. <laughs> That's man. Yo, send me the cliff notes. I, I that. No, no, I'm playing. I'm playing with you. Now, um, so how do you? Okay, do okay. I know in poly, just in general, um, it's a struggle within scheduling. You know what I mean? You, you know, time management. It, you you got to really put everything kind of. How do you, with four partners, handle that then? Is it really an issue? Is it an understanding? Is it like that? She on the phone all day. <laughs> I would imagine. I am on my phone all day. If I'm not texting somebody, I'm FaceTiming somebody, I'm on Facebook Messenger with somebody, I really am on a phone all day. Um, but not just that. Uh, so aside from my, my newest partner, um, my other two partners, they have primaries outside of me. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, my boyfriend in Korea, of course, he has a wife. My girlfriend has a primary um, husband as well. So they have their own lives. <laughs> um, so it's really not that difficult in, in scheduling. Um, and none of us are like super like, clingy so we might talk for like five minutes actually on the phone and then the texting the checking in that's the thing um me and my husband been together for forever so <laughs> like we just go about our life as usual and and that's normal for us this new partner <laughs> he he is brand new to the poly world. Um, he is, he's still got a lot of his monogamous mindset. Um, so and he's the fourth of, person? Yes. Well, you got, uh, give, give, that, give that man some grace. We all got to start somewhere. <laughs> we got it, bro. <laughs> don't, don't kill him for not you gotta remember, Davis, for, you, for learning. Davis. David's like, new at it. So, I mean, he's learning. Nah, it's like it. year three, four for me. So, I've re- are you experienced? Yeah. Yeah, me, okay. me and David been probably about the same amount of time. David just only got one. You tripled up on him. You was never <laughs> for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Hey, she I hit the ground running. But no, that's not what happened. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you said the new one is, is, is um, I always say you can't have a monogamous mind in the polyamorous world or poly world in general, right? But so how are those challenges for him since he is, since he does have that monogamous mindset? So I have made a, I've made a conscious decision to move at his speed. Um, a lot of our conversations are education wise, like, you know, I send him a lot different stuff that y'all be posting on y'all pages he gets a lot of that from me and I'm like hey you know look this up like today we just had a conversation on NRE because he is extremely clingy at this moment and he's like it's just you it's just your energy and I'm like this is definitely NRE like you were just you're currently enthralled in the energy of our new relationship but understand that will dissipate and we'll get into the real and it's not gonna be rainbows and butterflies all day um so that was a conversation we had today and that's how most of our conversations are that's cool you know i mean it it, it sucks to say that sometimes we got to get educated in this but when you're learning a new love style you have to take that education in you have to unlearn to relearn a whole new situation. So that is kind of amazing that he's actually stepping up to the plate and saying, hey, I love you enough and I'm interested enough with to you, I'm into you that I w- want to get this information correct to actually have a relationship balanced and healthy. You know what I mean? Sometimes we leave that healthy part out of a relationship and that's the main part that we need to focus on make sure it's healthy, you know? But yeah, that is a that is amazing. I'm yo, we almost been there on here for like an hour. So I, I want to end it on this note to keep it still on long distance relationships. I'm learning. I might find myself in a long distance relationship. You know what I mean? Trying to understand how to actually catch the flows of things. You know what I mean? I don't know yet. You know, I might have to go on tour. I was just playing. I'm, I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I just want to find interest ways. I'm a very inconsistent individual because I'm very overwhelmed. I'm very occupied. I'm just busy all the time. So I, it, it's, it's great, like a person like me that's interested in trying to possibly go down that route, but understand how to approach it. I don't like to approach things not knowing, because if I do that, I'm going to fail and I'm going to cause chaos. And I don't like chaos. There's no chaos in my life right now. So it's just cool that you guys were so open to really drop so many jewels and perspectives and actually, you know, insight for people like us that don't know, but are very interested in individuals that live in other states. So I really, other countries, fuck, I've across the world girl across the <laughs> world let me say it like that because to me i am interested in, i mean um you can be interested in individuals that live, live not in the same area in, in another state other places whatever and it's just great ways to connect with them you know so i really do appreciate you but with that said this is advice for me what and, and Shanice, because you ain't done it right. You said younger. We ain't counting younger. We ain't counting this because yeah, the kid not. got transferred school to school, and we ain't playing kickball. So this like, like okay. information. I like, <laughs> I like all the information that they dropped. They really did put some great notes. And hey, I might end up finding myself in one. What advice would you give someone like me that's never experienced being in a long distance relationship to kind of expect or just kind of take away from this to know? It's not bad. It's, you know, there's possibilities in this. What would you give me as advice trying to go down this route? I would, uh, I would give you the same advice I would give anybody in any situation, man. You are human. Allow yourself to be human. Give yourself grace. Have patience with yourself because you will make mistakes. You will get shit wrong. It will be tough, but you have to allow yourself some time to fix that and work on it and not get too out of touch or out the way and end it on an early note just because you've gotten overwhelmed. I like that. David took the words right out of my mouth. Give yourself grace. Give your partner grace. Um, Because one of the things that you are going to find not just in long distance relationships, but in any relationship is it's going to take time to learn each other. Um, And in that time, you may find some things that you aren't too excited about. Um, But when you take that time to step back um, and analyze the relationship for what it really is outside of the expectations that you've set for it, um, you tend to find that even the things that you thought you didn't want, you can handle. 
say that for anybody considering a long distance relationship, don't be afraid when you meet someone, right? Like you could be traveling and when things open back up, we're going to meet people again. And it's okay to want to pursue someone, even though you guys live in different places. I think that some things you should pay attention to and maybe look out for is making sure someone is secure and making sure that you guys both have shared values and you guys know and understand that the relationship you're building is for you guys. No one else on the outside has to define it. And, and like I said, you don't have to be afraid to pursue it just because you guys don't live in the same space. You would never want to miss an opportunity to get to know someone and build something beautiful with someone just because they're far away. Um, and yeah, that's what I have to say. Love that. Love it. Shanice, I got to convert the question. You know what I mean? What did you take away from this, especially, you know, not exposed? Oh, I like, you how you, I like how you switched the question up. <laughs> okay so <laughs> you know what did you take away from being in a long distance relationship are you maybe interested in it are you you know what i mean do you kind of understand it a little bit more see the opportunity in it i do understand it a little bit more what i hear from tonight is that maybe i don't really have a big too much of a gap between my friendships and relationship and i need to gap it out a little more or figure out what the gap is because yeah I that's what I got from tonight is that I'm I don't know love is for I like what Shay said like if you if something happens out of if you're out of town pursue it but I feel like when I was in a monogamous relationship things come up and you don't pursue it because you're in that relationship so it's kind of like the same thing like if I'm in that state and in the whole in the country like I'm not gonna see you again but maybe we can have a good time right now and then not have a relationship. <laughs> so I don't know. I took that for a minute. Intimacy is amazing. You can call everything else out and say intimacy is mm-hmm. great in long distance relationships and it can create a spark when you come together. Bam. Me and myself, what I learned from this is like anything, anything is possible, right? Especially if the connection is real with individuals that you meet. You don't get to meet these individuals down the street. It opens so it broadens your, your opportunity to connect with different individuals. You know, you don't know who is close to close. And at the end of the day, um, being open to this idea opens yourself to connecting with more individuals on a different level. Before even meeting them physically, mentally, you connect. And that I think that's where a majority of relationships succeed. I want to know you mentally. I want to make sure that you know me purely, soul, my soul, everything. And when we meet physically, it's not really that's where our focus is. We know who we are. So I think I took a lot from this... Um, conversation just different ways to actually approach this relationship and know it is possible you know what i mean and you can meet the right one or you know right two three or four <laughs> 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 i didn't say that no but you can and it, it, it's it's amazing because we're not all the same you know what i mean what you know and especially especially where we grow up where we are area our surroundings so it's amazing to meet individuals you know from everywhere and you can have a relationship with them any type even platonic so yeah, I appreciate this. I appreciate all the jewels y'all dropped tonight. Thank y'all for joining me so much. I, I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight, dropping the jewels. But with that being said, I'm going to let y'all go ahead and do a little outro. Let people know where they get contact, any information, direct contact with you guys in the case they want to reach out and get just join the courses, join groups, or find events. Um, I don't know who wants to go first, so I'll let y'all go ahead and take it away. Hey, everyone. It's Shanice, Shani V, S-H-A-N-I-I-V dot com or without the dot com for IG. I do have a Tantra Killing course out now. Check it out online. Align your chakras with me. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for joining us. My name is Shay. I am a sex educator. I do have some courses coming out soon on how to be a better lover, how to build intimacy in your relationship, and how to build a relationship foundation. I'm trying to promote strong relationships between people and lovers. You guys can find me on Instagram at Shay is love. That's S-H-A-E-I-S-L-O-V-E. All of my links are in my bio. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I definitely want to give a special thanks to Alex and the Porter family for having me. Um, my name is Gibby. You can find me on Instagram at everybody underscore loves underscore Gibby. Um, I'll be posting all of the poly events that I come across. So if you're looking to intermingle with some of our community, go ahead and follow. And this is King. 
My IG is King underscore I underscore D. I'm here to represent the panel ENM. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Clubhouse, the panel ENM. Appreciate y'all. And just to do a little highlight, I'm going to go ahead and run around the room real quick. Shanice also has sex toys, so make sure you tap in with her. Also, her YouTube is popping. She's been a little bit behind on it, but she's going to come up and drop more content on it and more videos for you to catch up. At the moment, go ahead and catch up with, with, with what she already dropped. We got the beautiful Shay. Now, with her stuff, she sent me a package that has a beautiful candle that had booty. I will say that that is also Ooh. exciting because when you turn the candle on, it is a pleasurable sex. I don't want to say sex toy, but you know what I mean? Something you could just go ahead and make the, say, the, the, the wax safe because it is soy. You know, she also does have different oils on her site. So make sure y'all tap in because it is good for the body. It is good for the skin. Make sure y'all get tapped in with on that. Most definitely like it. Thank you so much, Shay, for sending my package. Gibby is an event planner, and she makes sure things get popping. She does have every connection if you need it in her local area. Can I say your local area? I don't want to, you know, I don't want to drop. Yeah, I mean, That's if you're going to say. So if you're looking to drop a poly event in San Antonio, Texas, make sure you tap in with her. And I'm talking to every poly person that's out there that's been asking me, hey, what's popping in your city? I'm not that person. I do shows. But right there, Gibby is your event planner. Tap in with her in San Antonio. Any event you want to plan, she could orchestrate it. Make sure y'all tap in. And that's Gibby underscore some of the information. I'm going to edit this part out. And King, King, I want to thank you, brother, so much. This is the person that runs all our pages. Make sure all the business for the panel ethical non-monogamy is going and running ahead and moving forward. So I want to show my appreciation and thanks. But if you have any information that you want to send to us, anything that we could help with your business, your content, especially if it's poly, uh, polygamy or polyamory, make sure you tap in with this man right here because he'll get it to us and we'll make sure we push it out. And with that being said, thank y'all so much. Peace, love, fish, fish grease, and all that shit. Love y'all and appreciate y'all.